In today's video, we review Power Rangers Heroes of the Grid. We are mainly going to be talking about the base game, uh, but I will give a little information on the expansions. However, a in-depth expansion review for each of the different main uh, expansions will come later. So, for the base game, you have your one boss, Rita. You have four monsters. And then you have two different main villains. Now, let's go ahead and do the elephant in the room to start off with. And the for me, the price point on this game is rather high, um, especially for what I believe you get within the game. Don't get me wrong, when we get to the end, we will talk about my overall opinion on the game. Spoiler alert, it is gonna be fairly high, but when it comes to the base and what you get, I am a little disappointed, and I believe it is because of one of the, the you know, possible problems, though that one of the things I absolutely love about the game it's one of those double-edged swords, and it is these miniatures. The miniatures, there are so many for the putties, and the 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 miniatures for the the bosses, and even for the Power Rangers um, themselves, they look so good. They're they're great. They I re I really do like them, but. I believe they artificially inflate the price of this game for what it is and the amount of game content within the base. I believe it's lacking a little. I almost wish that they would have come out with a lower tiered version of the game that maybe, especially for the putties, um, had token versions of these guys. Um, so that way you could ha put it out at like a half you know, or, or a quarter off. Um, and then it would fit down into a more correct price range, I believe. Uh, especially when they already came out with a foot soldier pack that has, I believe, six of each foot soldier type. You know, because of that, you very easily could have had a base game with tokens, kind of like what they did for the... Um, Megazoid uh, that could have represented a majority of you know the 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 putties, um, but if you did want the miniatures, you could have gotten that foot soldier pack. Um, I personally would have much preferred it to be done that way. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk a little bit more of what that base content is, why I think it might be a little lacking, um, some of the pluses and minuses of the game. When you play, you you every game you set up where you fight one boss, two monsters, and you choose two different putties. Well, within here, the base game, your only option are these two different foot soldiers. Your only option are one of four different monsters and you only have the one boss that makes replayability um especially in if you have a fairly stable five ranger group very you know consistent where the only things you're really changing is the monsters that you're playing the foot soldiers are always staying the same the boss is always staying the same Additionally, it only came with four locations. So these will always be the same. Of course, the locations, it's nice that they have a, a standard um, play and then a more difficult play uh, where some of these, where now the locations have um, an ability of their own um, that could help or hinder the rangers. Um, so it makes the red side a little more difficult, but for the most part, uh, you're talking about the, you know, it's, 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 you know, there's not much variety there. You're always playing the same four locations. You always have the same home base. 
Additionally, the footprint of the game is deceptively large. Um, your main play area is right here, and you think, oh, well, that's not a very big one, but then you have the Zorg board, and that adds a huge uh, added footprint to the board, to the game, and as you're playing and you're creating your... Uh, your minion or your foot soldier grid, um, that kind of uh, enlarges it as well. Of course, with the size of this board, you can kind of set them off, you know, this way and and they kind of fit in. Um, and the most you'll have is three levels. Uh, we're not, I mean, um, I guess technically four, because you could have your foot soldiers, your two bosses, and heaven forbid, or your two monsters and your heaven forbid, your, your one boss, if you had them all out at the same time, it could go four deep. But for the most part, this right here would be the footprint of the game. And looking at my little mat right here, uh, we are looking at, let's see here, approximately... Uh, almost a two foot by one and a half foot play area um, by the looks of it. Um, so, you know, it's not a huge, huge, uh, uh, you know, play footprint, but it, it does wind up growing and getting larger uh, uh, deceptively. So now some of the pros, some of the things that I really do like about the game um, and that is the use of IP or the, or the Power Rangers aspect of the game. I absolutely love this. I believe they, they, they grabbed that Power Rangers feel to this game excellently. Um, the different Rangers have different abilities. They kind of fit with the characters in the game. The, the minions and putties and everything look fabulous. When you boil it down, this game is a street level combat game. And one of the big things in the show and movies are the Zorgs, their robot companions, and then especially the Megazord. So how do you incorporate that kind of a feature into a ground level game? And they've done that by once you've earned the Zorgs, you get the special ability on that card. And I think that is a great way of incorporating this feature of the show into the game. I also like how they've set up the upgrade version. So as you're defeating minions, you're getting stronger. It is a very interesting and unique way to do that experience tracking. Um, and as you level up, you are getting the Zorgs, which are adding abilities to the Ranger that is drawn all the way up until you get to the Megazord at the end. The one question that I have had, and if anybody out there knows the answer, I would love to know. It's something I have not been able to find myself. Once you have earned the Megazoid, um, I you know, the nothing says you can't then still use your, um, you know, individual abilities. But if you really think about it and what's going on, these guys have come together to form this guy. So now you should only have this guy's ability, not the individuals anymore. But I still believe in the game because it is more of an experience, uh, more of a leveling up tracker that I do believe you still have the use of all of the 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 the, the, the smaller ones um, along with your Megazoid. So so it's it's it, in that case it kind of misses a little bit of you know if you try to think about it too much, but as long as you remember that it is more of a um, experience leveling up, then it, it grows to be okay. The base game does come with six dice to be used, which is enough to play everything and do everything. Um, 
but I do really love the uh, expansion dice that, that they were allowed you to buy. Um, so much though that in phase two, I got two more sets of the added die so I can have six of each color. And in fact, I'm actually hoping that they wind up coming out with an orange and a purple six count die set. Um, so for skull and bulk, you can have special dice for them as well. <coughs> of course, those dice add nothing but an aesthetic addition to the game, but those kind of little things I really do like. Speaking of aesthetic add-ons, they do also have the figure for the Megazoid. Um, again, it does not add any gameplay value to the game, but it does add aesthetically a little bit of extra. Of course, I'm getting a little ahead of myself uh, talking about some of the expansions. We'll touch more on that at the end. Um, back to the game level. Um, some of the things that I really like about the game is the unique way that it does life tracking for your rangers. Every ranger has a 10 card deck. And as you get new versions or new rangers, your ranger card will change with a different base ability for that new black ranger, but his black deck will stay the same. This black deck does two fold and each one has their own deck um does two fold one it is your action that you play during the game as you play when you start off you can draw up to five cards these are now the cards that you can play during the game but this deck is also your life that is the unique part of it once you run out of cards your guy in a sense dies if you if if you know he gets um um, dazed or whatever and goes back to the center where if you have revive tokens you can revive him and send him back onto the field if you do not and you run out of deck out of cards from your deck the game is over that is one of the uh, lose conditions so this deck you have to be careful it adds a ton of strategy to the game how many cards do i draw on my next turn you know we've been fighting there's only a couple cards left in my deck do i try to draw a couple to get more out um do i do a recovery type action to try to put more cards in um it's the 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 whole way that they do the the ranger decks i absolutely love very unique um to the gameplay. Additionally, I also love how they do the world building and how they do the minion building, where you build a deck of all of your locations. And you have to be careful, though, um, if you do get some of the expansions and get different types of foot soldiers, you want to make sure that the foot soldiers you are picking you know, correspond to the locations. Um, so you would not want to play with, say, these four and then one of the um, Mastodon foot soldiers or whatever because they are not in any of these cards. Um, so you want to make sure you keep that in mind. But the way that they have done this is you have the deck of, of, of location. These show the number of foot soldiers that come out and go. And so what you're doing is you're flipping the card. So this is saying now that I would have three super putties that come onto the industry, um, industrial district. So that is very unique, very interesting way of doing it. If by chance when you flip this card, it was a boss or monster there, then both the foot soldiers and that boss or monster would then spawn at... And then, of course, you'd, you'd flip it to see which boss or monster it actually is. Um, but which, you know, of all of this flip would then come at the industri uh, industrial district. Very interesting. Very unique. I, I really do love that aspect of the game. Then each villain whether they are a foot soldier or a monster or a boss, has their own deck as well. 
again, this is pretty awesome. Um, when you're playing, you will have the decks now laid out, um, you know, or set off to the side for what you have chosen, um, whether you've chosen, you know, specific items or specific bosses or you've done it randomly. You then get the deck for those characters and during gameplay, when you go to fight, you then flip over um, the number of corresponding cards for the number of foot soldiers, bosses, monsters, uh, or foot soldiers that you're fighting. It can be um, up to four, if I remember right. Um, so you'd have that, and they form what they call a um, foot soldier, monster, villain grid. And based on what the skills have, um, for some things such as guard, uh, let's go ahead and, where are you? Guard, there we go. So if you had this one and say this guy then right here, this card would guard this card. Additionally, it works both up, down, left, and right. So if you had a, um, monster, which as the game plays, the monsters go above your foot soldiers. This foot soldier would also guard that monster. So you would have to take him out before you could start working on that, that monster card. Very interesting. I, I do like how they have done that, how they have changed the, the, the fighting aspect of the game. One of the things that I touched on was the miniatures. It does add to that price point within the game, but I absolutely love them. They are a nice large scale miniature. Um, so they will take to painting, especially uh, people newer into painting very well. They have done to me a very smart thing as to color all of the Min, all of the uh, enemies, whether they are bosses or foot soldiers, in this gray plastic, while the Power Rangers are in their uh, appropriate colored plastic. Uh, again, it helps for if you're not a painter, you can go out and play the game right away. You can very easily distinguish the different Rangers because once you boil it down, a Ranger, other than their unique weapon, most look fairly similar. So having that different colored Plastic really helps with that. You don't really suffer with that as much for the minions because they are all so drastically different. But even them having their own special color uh, of being this gray plastic really does help. It really is a, a nice uh, addition. Some of the... Um, um, the, the negatives that I have... Uh, for the game are with the, especially with the, uh, the Megazoid, uh, Megazord, I find that he is hard to get out. Um, you have to do so much leveling. You have to go all the way up to level six. He does not come out very, very often. Um, and with the way that the game is done, uh, with round one, you usually will fight nothing but foot soldiers and then round two, you will usually add one more boss. Round three, you will usually add the second boss. Um, so then you will have, if you haven't beaten the first two out there, with round four forward, where the um, the, the main boss um, comes out, there is this progression of difficulty. You kind of have that same progression of of ability because as you get the the zords um you you do get a little stronger you do get those extra abilities however i do feel sometimes in the beginning it is a little lopsided and it can get away from you fairly easily additionally especially if you're new into the game um because the 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 way it is designed and the way that the 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 little everything can get a, get out of hand fairly quickly. One of your other lose conditions is if all four locations become panicked and it is extremely easy 
to think you're doing awesome, you're playing really well, you're getting things, and if you have the wrong bad luck of the draw of the cards, and in you know since you're you're pulling out five cards for, to to seed the world with each round, it is very easy going forward after round two or three to just within that draw phase um, where you're, you're, you're setting up that new phase of, of foot soldiers and monsters and, and bosses and what have you, that the game can then go panicked right there and you're done, you've lost. Um, that can be a little disappointing from time to time. <clears throat> Some of the other things that I don't really care for the game is the token reuse. Um, there are some cases, uh, especially like here with the um, energy tokens where you put these on the center console, the center area for to represent those um, those those relights. So as you your your deck runs out and you in a sense die um, or get staggered um, and you go back to the center, as long as you have one of those, you've revived your character. Well, those revival tokens are just a reuse of energy tokens. I kind of wish they had made um, specialty tokens just for those. Because, um, I mean, there's plenty of room on the the boards, especially the boards that had just a single location on them. They definitely could have made a, a, a separate token for that revive. Additionally, some of the tokens... Um, there is just enough for the base, um, like the, the panicked token. I kind of wish they would have gone ahead and given you maybe a couple extras. Um, so if these get damaged, uh, you have a backup. Um, I, I really wish, you know, they would have, they would have gone with that. Additionally, I am a huge fan of just round tokens. I don't really care for um, square or shaped tokens. My main reason is because I love my games. I tend to play them a good bit, and I want to protect my games. Um, so, so I will sleeve my cards. The ranger cards are your terror tarot size cards, and then your uh, deck your 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 foot soldier boss monster uh, ranger all of these kind of cards are just your normal standard cards. Um, but when it comes to tokens, when I can, I like to put these in coin cases to again protect these. Um, it's more useful on games where you are drawing your tokens out of say a blind bag. Not as much, not as not as needed in these. But I I still like to uh, you know go all out and, and try, you know, you're spending a bunch of money on a game. Let's try to keep it good as long as possible. And when you have these weird shapes it is, or squares or whatever, it is a little more difficult. So this being a Kickstarter game, I think it hurt from that Kickstarter fatigue that you have. Um, where again, we have this base game and then it came with, of course, your Kickstarter exclusives and your Kickstarter stretch goals. And then, you know, they've designed it with the other expansion um, and, and add-ons. And I almost feel that with, again, with the base content you have here uh, within the game, um, some add-on is almost required for this game. Um, whether you're lucky enough to be able to get that Kickstarter um, add-ons, Kickstarter exclusives, or whether you just get uh, the um, the uh, expansion Shattered Grid, you definitely need something to add additional locations, to add additional foot soldier types, to add additional bosses, to add additional monsters to add to that replayability. Also, it came with only your five main rangers. I wish the base game, rather than being one of the Kickstarter uh, exclusive add-ons, came with the green ranger. 
that one small addition within the base would have also increased the replayability, especially if you're playing your five ranger team. Speaking of your five ranger team, I do like the way that they have put lots of different play styles within this game. They designed the game to be a five ranger game. And in the initial rules, they set it up as the five ranger game. However, they give you rules to change that, to do a four ranger team, a three ranger team, a two uh, a group team, to if you have the sixth ranger to create, to play a sixth ranger team. They give you lots of different options, lots of different play styles. So in that way, especially if you're solo, being that this is a true co-op game, if you're playing solo, you do have that little bit of, of replayability where you can try it. Well, here, let me try it as a five ranger team. Is that too much for me to handle, for me to control at once? Let me, let me try with maybe just the three ranger team. Let me try different, different combinations if I'm going with the three ranger of, of, of the rangers that I have chosen. Um, these kind of things do add a little bit of replayability, but I believe adding that sixth ranger would have drastically increased that replayability. Speaking of true co-op, that is one of the other definite positives about this game, and that is that true co-op feel of the game. It encourages you, just like the Power Rangers, it, you know, and it goes with the IP, that, that encourages you to talk with your fellow rangers, um, if you're playing with more than one person, to to help each other out, to use your cards to help them, and vice versa. That I absolutely love. It is a great use of that co-op aspect, and it incorporates the IP so perfectly. I absolutely love that. So on to those expansions that we briefly caught on to. Um, of course, you have the Kickstarter exclusives. That would be my number one expansion box that you would want to get because it comes with a bunch of exclusives and two built-in um, expansion uh, games, um, White Lightning, I believe, and Green with Evil. Um, where you get the White Ranger and the Green Ranger card. Um, these add a ton of replayability. The Shattered Grid is the um, expansion that you can get and add into the game um, at retail. Again, if that's your only option, I highly, highly recommend it um, because it does add so much replayability and so much extra content into your game. The other is the Villains Pack. Um, it adds a bunch of, of extra monsters and, uh, and, and an extra boss. Again, the more variety of monsters that you have to face, the more variety of bosses that you have to face, the more replayability that you have. That one small little expansion really does add a bunch to the game. The Foot Soldier expansion is more of an aesthetic addition. Um, it doesn't really add a ton uh, as you are growing, as you're playing with especially six Ranger, six players. You might need more of each individual Foot Soldier, which is why they have included it. But it really doesn't add too much. My favorite part of the Foot Soldier box is that it gives a nice molded... Um, case to put some of those uh, foot soldiers from the Kickstarter exclusive box in a more protected way. Uh, so those can be the ones you paint to look really pretty and then put them in a case to help protect them. Uh, that is the one thing that I do like about that set. The dice, again, we've kind of mentioned on, I do love the dice. I wound up liking them a lot more than I thought I would. Um, again, it just adds, I like to be able to have, you know, blue dice for my Blue Ranger. Um, so much so that I have ordered two additional dice pack within phase two so I can have six dice for each Ranger. Finally, for phase one, we also have the Bulk and Skull expansion um 
well, actually, I'm sorry, um, that's not the final. We do have the two mega figures. Uh, you, we have the Megazoid mega figure. This is just an aesthetic add-on to the game. Doesn't add any additional gameplay. It just adds a replacement for the Megazoid token. So instead of using this token um, that you would place in the location, you would use that figure. However, there is the villain um, uh, large figure that does add additional content and that uh, if you were to only get one of them that definitely would be the way to go um, being that it does add game content so now on back on to bulk and skull this is the only expansion that i was disappointed with for the uh, base game no it's not because i do not own it but it is because of the way that it came out. Um, here they have phase one and you think, hey, I'm going all in. I'm getting everything. I'm supporting it. And, and then all of a sudden uh, during manufacturing, they came out with an extra expansion. And the only way you could have gotten that was at the convention or they did allow you to order it online. Um, unfortunately, for just a one small $20 set, uh, the shipping on that, to me, made it, um, priced it out. Um, so I am having to wait to get that one uh, within phase two. So I'm going to get it in with all of my phase two stuff. Um, but I was a little disappointed that they did come out with a, a expansion, um, you know, kind of after the fact. Uh, I, I wish they would have, have had a way to be able to, 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 let you add that twenty dollars in and get it with, uh, you know, with your with your uh, phase one set. Other than that, it's actually really great. You're at, you're adding two additional rangers. Once again, the more rangers you have, the more replay ability that you'll get. Because remember, you have the base five, and then all you're getting is a green and a white. You are getting replacements for the reds, but you only pick one red, and you don't you don't play with two different reds or two different blues. You 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 pick which red you want to come with, and you get the red deck that goes with that red ranger that you have chosen. So the more different ranger colors that they have, the more options you truly have, um, and that with those two additions, you now have eight rangers to bring on. Speaking of additional help, one of the fun, cool things that they did is within the uh, add-ons and the exclusives, they do have Alpha 5, I believe, which is the robot friend. You can bring him into the game and to help the Rangers, and he can be played in two different ways. Again, adding to that IP, I love the way that they have incorporated him um, to, to allow you to give a little bit. I, again, it was one of those ones I really wished he wasn't part of the exclusives um, so that you could you could have had him right right here, right within the base. Um, again, to to add that that a little extra replayability, the little extra options within the base. All in all, I think this is a really great game. Um, as, and it only gets better as you add on the expansions. Um, but even with that said, if all I had, my only option was the base game at the base price, you bet I would still get this game. Um, just because the play is so much fun, the unique ways that they do your life and they, they do the, the, the minion grid and the way that they spawn everything and the way that... It's 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 very unique, very 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 IP. Um, you know, it, it's it's uh, if if you're a Power Ranger fan, it's a must. Even if you're not a Power Ranger fan, the game itself is very interesting, very unique, very fun to play. And I think even non Power Ranger fans would enjoy this game. Of course, if you dislike the Power Rangers, you probably would go into this. You probably wouldn't get this at all. Um, 
you you'd probably go in um, with that little bit of negativity um, but you know that it would be one of its few downsides that it is very IP specific um, so if you're a huge fan you're definitely all in if you're a huge opponent you're definitely all out if you're on the fence you could care less either way it's definitely an all in um, the game is that unique that that does have that much you know fun to it um, so that is power rangers heroes of the grid uh they j finished up phase one phase two has as of filming this finished up but i do believe um you can still um uh, because i mean the um uh 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 pm um, product manager just came out for it. So you should be able to late pledge within that late pledge. You can go back and you can get anything from phase one, including the Kickstarter exclusives, um, which is especially useful. If you have gotten this game via retail, um, you, you can go into phase two, get some of the phase two stuff and get some of these exclusives. I highly recommend phase one Kickstarter exclusives. Um, so there it is, Power Rangers Heroes of the Grid. I hoped this helped you to determine if this game is right for you, if you found it interesting, um, if it is something you are looking forward to, um, to you know, to 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 do that that little bit of investment. Um, again, I highly recommend it. It is definitely a thumbs up for me. Um, coming soon, I will be doing my full on. Uh, set up, which is pretty close to what I have here, um, but going over how you set up the game and then all the rules for play and then carrying on into a couple playthroughs. So you can look forward to that coming and I will see you guys next time.